It is such a pleasure to see all of you here. And I want to welcome you on behalf of the initiative that is part of the USC goal and dream uh, to help eliminate homelessness. I just want to really thank the faith-based community. I know that um, you were talking about some of the challenges of how do you motivate your congregations and how do you work together and how do you move the needle on this issue of homelessness that has been with us really far, far too long. But I just want to recognize some of the successes. I remember I've been with the mayor's office for about two years, well, a little bit, yeah, two years on October 5th. And one of my first meetings was a small round table that we had in the press conference room back in December of 2015. And we started talking about homelessness and what, could, what can be done about this. And then that kind of grew. We did the Welcome Home Project. Um, we did the Interfaith Council and, of course, H and HHH. But even within that, there were many side conversations of what can we do that I think have really shaped the agenda that we have today. So the three pillars um, that we really truly focus on are street engagement strategy. And this is always the question of what do you do today? But I think in the conversation around uh, the faith-based community, it's really how do we move the needle from charity to action, which I think is what you've been talking about. And this is something of a concern as we look at the holiday season coming up. And we know that the traditional response is homelessness all of a sudden becomes a hot topic on Thanksgiving Day and on Christmas Day, maybe New Year's Day. And we have, particularly in the community of Skid Row, people will drive past Hollywood, they'll drive past Manchester Square, they'll drive past Playa, um, Lamert Park, and other areas to come to Skid Row without a, it's not a conversation with the community, it's not an assessment of, well, what do you need, or it's not an ongoing partnership, but it's almost like this, um, this continuation of othering where we come and drop off food, and then we leave, and we're back out of the community. And that's, a ch that's the challenge we really have to change. So we say, you know, hold family-style meals. What congregations are hosting meals, and how do you invite people in and rotate it so it may not be a burden? You may have small congregations and that can't cook every night, but if you look at Dolores Mission over in Boyle Heights, that community has adopted their feeding program, and it's a group of different women and organizations that come in every night. So seven days a week, there's a hot meal and a conversation. That's what we need to move to. And there are other, um, how do we create safe zones? We don't have enough shelters right now to house everyone. I know we always focus on people that we call, and I, I'm putting in air quotes because I disagree, service resistance, but there are actually a lot of people that do want to come inside to a safe, into a welcoming uh, space that's going to welcome them, not judge them, not make them feel shameful, not have to show your pedigree that you're clean and sober or that you have your restraining order or that you have your high school diploma. They just want a safe place. So how can we use um, and go back to the idea of not just hospitality but sanctuary within our faith-based communities and really want to thank um, our friends at uh, the United Methodist for stepping out on the safe parking program for families. And that was, you know, to be honest, when I first heard of the, of the focus on families, I didn't quite understand. I was like, that's good, but that's kids sleeping in cars. Is that, you know, is that a good thing, a bad thing, et cetera? But someone just explained to me the other day when you think about women fleeing domestic violence, the first thing you do is you pack up your kids in the car and you go. And imagine if we had this whole network of spaces where women or even fathers or grandmothers these days could just pack up their kids and know there's a safe place that they can go. So it's really, you know, again, hospitality without judgment. And even when you've been working in it, you have to catch yourself and listen into the stories. And I'm sorry I missed them earlier of how do you do that. In fact, one of the reasons I was late, we we're trying to erect a hygiene center. So that's something else faith-based communities can do with showers and bathrooms. We're, um, there's a, we're working on it in the city-owned lot in Skid Row. So I actually had a walk through building and safety. So just so you know, just because you work in the mayor's office doesn't mean you cut corners when it comes to doing these projects. So hopefully as we learn, we can provide more technical assistance to each of you too. And of course, storage. And storage could be daytime storage or year round. If you have a doctor's appointment, imagine what would you do if all your belongings are with you? How do you go to that job appointment? How do you go even to that housing appointment? And where are places that people can even just, again, safely put their belongings for a little bit so they can be freed up and then to move around? The other part, I think, is housing. And as we talked about HHH and H, and I think we went kind of in detail, so I don't want to be repetitive on that, but how can you be helpful? One, look at your own properties that you have, and I know we have talked about this. How do you partner with current developers? Who are the landlords within your congregation that could accept Section 8 vouchers or other rental subsidies? Um, 
and look into more information on our new accessory drawing units. Who are the homeowners that may be struggling and could use extra income through rental property? And now that we have the ADU ordinance and some of them um, trying to ease up those regulations, how can we prepare them for that? And then, of course, the other is prevention. The best defense we can, we know that housing is, I mean, homelessness and ending homelessness is tied to housing, but prevention really is the best uh, defense. And this is just a couple of questions because I think as faith based communities, you do have an intimate relationship with your congregations. We just met with a group last night and they said one of their biggest concerns were seniors who were being displaced from their community. So each of you, how many of you know of those seniors or households that are one check away from being evicted or maybe stressed over it or maybe running into utility crisis where their electricity is cut off? So it's as on the ground, how can you kind of do these assessment? Because there are now resources that we can tie people to. If it's Measure H and looking at Leticia over there, the family, and we even have individual prevention funding access to legal services. Um, through Department of Water and Power, they're actually our utility assistant. So there's resources out there, but you, you need your help in making that one-on-one -on -one connection. And just other uh, programs that we have are around employment. Not everyone will be able to go in the housing right away. Some people can actually self-resolve if we can help them increase their income or build the latest job skill. So we have a program called LA Rise, and LA Rise is a feeder into some of the new jobs coming on with Metro or the expansion of the airport or with our uh, sidewalk, which we will do at some point one day um, to fix all of our sidewalks. So a lot of infrastructure opportunities are being fed through the program called LA Rise. Um, and I think that's it, I'll turn it. Oh, and before, because Brenda will kill me if I don't mention this, in your packets, uh, some of the resources, there's some mini resources guide, guides in here. Um, one's an assessment that you could do on your congregation. One I'm really excited about, the League of Women Voters, they ask how can they help. They put together this step-by-step -step guide to our permanent supportive housing, so please check it out. This is all volunteer-based. Um, of course, uh, Daniel's uh, Days of Compassion with the Mayor, Safe Parking, et cetera. So please take a look at this at your leisure. And I'll turn it over to Daniel. Thank you, Elisa. So um, first of all, thank you so much for the invitation to be here. Uh, I'm among many friends um, uh, and many new people. Um, I, I, if I may, just um, briefly uh, for a theological reflection, our goal is to house people, for to recognize that everyone uh, has a right to safe, affordable, clean housing, and to to make to build that permanent supportive housing, and to bring people who are currently experiencing homelessness into that housing. Yes, that is our goal. Let me just submit to you that as people of faith, every action that we take along these lines is to grow in the knowledge and love of God and God's creatures and our fellow creatures and our fellow and we are creatures and our fellow neighbors. Every action that we take is to grow in the knowledge and love of God. And it all comes from that. So whatever we do along these lines, if we're doing it coming from that motivation, coming from that yearning to grow in the knowledge and love of God and our fellow creatures, we'll be successful. Um, I'm going to dive in because Father Heft has a, 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 a clock, and that's a good thing. Um, in December of uh, 2016, um, a number of uh, faith leaders came together um, uh, in what we are calling the Mayor's Interfaith Collective. At that meeting, uh, the mayor set an agenda. Uh, we were uh, to uh, go after... Uh, critical issues in the city of Los Angeles and the agenda he set was homelessness, immigration, and jobs. And uh, we could probably spend the next decade work working on those issues, but, but this was where we, this was the starting point. All four people who were up here previously were members of 
uh, the Mayor's Interfaith Collective. And I see others, uh, Hey Panim, Reverend Michael Mata, Salam al Mariati, Michael Ellison Lewis, uh, Archbishop Gomez is represented by Bishop Dave O'Connell uh, on, on it. Um, uh, so um, we are uh, steeped uh, in uh, a very deep desire uh, to take action and to move the needle uh, regarding people experiencing homelessness. Um, let me dive into something that we're calling the Days of Compassion Project. Uh, this is a very uh, specific list of actions uh, that uh, faith communities uh, can engage in. And I loved the, the conversation around, um, you know, how are people experiencing compassion within congregations where the love of God and our fellow creatures is supposed to be paramount. Uh, and so it's a really interesting uh, discussion, and, and it's a, a very real challenge uh, that's faced. I think by, pre by bringing people together. Uh, you know, um, the invitation at the, at the starting point of the Days of Compassion project is for preachers to preach, uh, to bring uh, people together in, in congregations on Sunday, uh, on Saturday morning, our uh, Friday kutbah, you know, uh, you know, at a, uh, in a mosque, whatever, whatever the setting may be, and talk about it, and preach about it, and come from the standpoint of growing in the knowledge of and love of God and our fellow creatures, um, and then to invite congregations into a congregation-wide conversation about that. Who are our neighbors? Who are our neighbors? Um, if they are not, um, you know, the people that we encounter every single day and every one of us encounters someone experiencing homelessness every single day. Um, from there, uh, parishes, congregations can discern among themselves, certainly this conversation about uh, assessing their underutilized real estate and can they turn this into permanent supportive housing? Can they turn it into crisis shelter? They can certainly have that conversation. We're just asking, Mayor Garcetti is just simply saying, just have the conversation. You don't have to say, yeah, we're gonna do that. Just have the conversation. Let's, let's not not talk about this. Let's bring this out into the open and have this conversation because from Mayor Garcetti's standpoint, we are all responsible. This is the responsibility of every Angelino. It's not, the mayor's not gonna solve this problem. The city council's not gonna solve the problem. The county's not gonna, it's, it, it has to be all of us working together. That's how the problem will be solved. Um, so there can be this discussion about, um, you know, assessing um, underutilized real estate, certainly. Uh, there can also be, um, I think uh, uh, Reverend Hoover uh, brought up um, affordable, the affordable housing uh, linkage fee. Uh, there is in the city council right now, it's not wholly a done deal, right? Yeah. Um, and so, um, you know, be in touch with us and we'll alert you as to when uh, this is coming up in um, the Plum uh, Committee meetings uh, and also in City Council itself, and you're all invited. And to bring um, parishioners, bring uh, your fellow congregants to these meetings and stand up and say, we need this. We, we need to stem this tide of people falling into homelessness. We need to make uh, housing affordable. We must do something. You know. The voters stood up and, and said, yes, tax me for HHH and H. Now let's just simply ask the developers to kick in their fair share. It's not too much to ask. No one, everyone else in the state of California does it. Every, just virtually every municipality, Los Angeles does not do it, and that has to change. Um, become a hospitality hub. Uh, here's another thing, uh, a, a topic of conversation. Um, you know, offering safe spaces that um, uh, Elisa was uh, mentioning. Um, 
A lot of churches, mosques, synagogues, temples have feeding programs. And that is, a, that is a, an essential thing. You're doing what you've been asked to do, which is feed my people. You could conceivably add to that, you know, some services, some access to services, um, you know, whether it be for housing. The goal of every homelessness-oriented action that we take in our uh, faith communities ought to include access to permanent supportive housing, a means of dispensing information about that, along with health information, job training, and so on and so forth. But the ultimate goal is to make available to people information about access to permanent supportive housing. So I invite you to please um, uh, consider that in your congregations. Um, and then, of course, safe parking. Um, uh, leading groups on visits to permanent supportive housing, uh, uh, just to just to you know change the conversation about what people's perceptions are about permanent supportive housing, um, and there's other things too. It's all on the sheet in there. You can read it for yourselves and have this conversation in your congregations. I'm going to end with attend um, Days of Compassion Civic University. Uh, now, unfortunately, tonight <laughs> is our first uh, one that we're having, and, and I, I, wouldn't, I wasn't going to say our first one until we are actually upon it, because we will do more. Um, but uh, uh, tonight we're going to meet at uh, City Hall, um, and we're going to go up to the 10th floor. There's a big group of us. Uh, it's p people coming from faith communities, and we're going to start in. Uh, learning about where things are at in terms of homelessness here in the city of Los Angeles. On Friday, we're making a visit to a permanent supportive housing site so we can have firsthand uh, understanding and experience of what this actually is. Uh, and then on the 25th, we're going back to, uh, we're coming back together again. And out of that, we're going to be writing plans of action. So I want to let you know that Salam al -Mar Mariati of the Islamic Center of Southern California um, uh, introduced the idea of doing one at the Islamic Center in early November. We could let you know about that. Um, we're going to be having a conversation about doing one out in the San Fernando Val Valley, Rabbi Farkas, uh, so we can have a conversation about that. And we will go wherever there is the, the need and the interest, um, because this is something that you know, we believe in spreading the love. Uh, Mayor Garcetti uh, will sometimes talk about leading with love. Well, we're going to be spreading the love. Thanks for being here. Issues of homelessness, poverty, and so on are not simply political issues. They're also moral issues that touch upon religious traditions. But I think the bottom line in my mind was getting religious leaders to talk to each other and getting some good sense of practical steps that could be taken. Thank you for coming.